Hi there, this is Derek from Pacific Coast Auto and we're looking at something really unique and something that our channel has never seen before. It's a 1990 Toyota Crown. And not a lot of people know about the Toyota Crown if you don't live in Japan, but this is Toyota's flagship sedan. And so that means this is the best vehicle that Toyota makes or made at this time. And this was, I guess this year, 1990, was just when Lexus was coming in. And so this one is kind of similar to the Lexus LS, although it does use a one series older engine and same uh, four liters V8. And this is kind of the sedan that all of the Japanese businessmen and CEOs would drive or get driven around in. It is something really unique. It's got a lot of really cool things on the outside and the inside. And I'm going to show you those compared to the auction sheet. This one is going to the USA. And this, uh, the Century is not particularly a car that uh, I can give a strong recommendation to. Not because it's a bad car. It is, in fact, a really cool, extremely awesome car and comes at a really decent price. This one, in fact, has only 40,000 original kilometers. And many of them have low mileage and many are in good condition. But the reason why they don't get a strong recommendation is because they use a lot of bespoke pieces that you can only get here in Japan. And so maintaining a car like this can be a little bit challenging. So before I get into that too much, let's uh, look at the engine bay. Now normally I would have the engine bay open, but in this case, the hood dampers don't work. And so I can't do that. Just going to show you slightly here. So, 4 liter V8. Interestingly, it uses two ignition coils. Still uses a distributor because this was an old car. Electronic suspension there. Everything is stock in here except for the HID headlights. And you may notice that there's some water on the ground. I opened the radiator cap here to check it and some water spilled out and it's cooled on the ground below the car. So really no problems with anything that I see here. The car looks to be in, in great condition inside out. So let's lower that. Go over the auction sheet before I go over the car. And not an awful lot of details on this one because the car is in pretty good condition. So let's just see what we got. 1990 Century Type E, 4000 cc, grade RA, which means a very small accident. Interior C, uh, this one here is brown metallic. And actually it's a really neat paint color. It does have some mica in it, but not an awful lot because you know it's 1990 paint. But this car really suits brown. <laughs> I think that uh, it's kind of the perfect color for the car. It says the battery's dead, which is not really dead because it would hold the charge for me to restart the car when I started for the second time, but when I started for the third time, it wasn't enough. And so uh, it probably just needs the alternator to boost it back up. Okay, 38,928 original kilometers on here. Automatic transmission, because they only came in autos. Alloy wheels, power steering, power windows, drivers, uh, power driver's seat, toll collection box, and aftermarket stereo, and winter tires. Dashboard has a small rip in it. Actually, I didn't see the small rip, but it. Ah, I can see it now only from this side. But it is warped a little bit from uh, from sun. Engine oil leak. I saw a leak on the valve cover on the left hand side around the bolt. And the grommet has a little rubber seal. Probably has gone bad. And in fact, let me just show you this. These seals here, you can see there's a little crack there, they feel a little bit hard. And so, if this were my car, one of the first things I would do is get some oil and just put it on all of these seals here and around the windows. Because window seals, although these ones are in good condition, uh, that's not something that you want to have to replace. And getting some replacement parts might be a little bit tricky. Okay, rear floor dented, that would be from the accident. Uh, right rear side member head, one part dented. Um, vehicle height is different. Maybe the shocks are not good. Now, let me just show you about that before I get into the rest of that. The vehicle's got electronic height control. And if you take a look at this one, you're sitting too low on the rear only on the right hand side. Now I did start the car up when I was testing the car and during that time the electronic suspension boosted it back up to normal height but it looks like it's not doing it this time. 
it's got a little light here. Electronic height control, and if that light is on, then that means that the pump is working to change the height. So it looks like the car is boosting its itself up right now at the moment, but it's not quite done. And I don't think that it boosts up very well when the car is just idling. I think that the car should be driving and having higher RPM in order for it to run the pump properly. And so that's just a guess, because I don't really know the car very well. So some scratches on the front here, repainted panels on the right side, front and rear, repainted hood, repainted roof with some uneven paint, and a couple of mild dents. U2 on the back is the biggest one. So I'll show you that U2 on the back. I'm going to show the right here. I'm going to show the vehicle in more details and a walk around in just a sec here. Chrome bumper here looks really neat. Good to see chrome bumpers. The chrome is all in good condition. And I can't find those A2 scratches here. But I will say, this is really interesting. I don't even know what this is, but it looks like some kind of small driving light. Really cool. The signals are way down, almost hitting the ground. And of course, fender mirrors. And more cars should have fender mirrors, but Nowadays, you don't see them anymore. And in fact, in some places, they probably aren't even legal. Okay, so that's the inspection. Just put that down so that it doesn't fall. And let's take a look at the body. So it's a pretty unique looking vehicle. In fact, it looks very 1970s American style. And of course, being Japanese, it's not going to be as unreliable, I guess. The engine that's in this car, I believe, was only available in this car, but I'm not 100% sure on that. The later model ones of the century actually had Toyota's only V12 engine. It's the same one that uh, I think tuning company Top Secret used for their V12 Supra. And this one's not a V12, because that was only on the later model ones. And I don't know exactly how much power this put out, but it, it's an older engine, and it's 4 liter V8, and so probably just below 200 horsepower or so, with much more torque than it has horsepower. The vehicle is low, long, and wide, and so it's not a shape that you see anymore. And the roof being flat like it is, really gives it kind of that ambassador look to it. Okay, yeah, this vehicle was from Sapporo, which is kind of a rusty area. So you have to be really careful checking around here. Everything looks to be really tidy. Most likely it was parked inside for most of its life. Okay, now uneven paint. It's not that easy to see, especially when the car's dusty like this one is right now. This side, you can tell the paint is, is bad just by taking a look at it, especially on the front fender. Okay, look at the fender mirrors again because those are cool. Nice long hood. the trunk, I'm going to show you, it's, I'm going to do a little bit of a strange thing here and show you the trunk before I show you the inside of the car, just because there's so many things inside the trunk to show you, or inside the car, not really inside the trunk. The liner's a bit bunchy in here, and the spare tire is very strangely wrapped in carpet. Um, I guess that's a thing. The trunk is very deep, but... I guess deep this way, but not deep this way. So it is a little bit strange, but certainly you can fit an awful lot of stuff in there. But I wanted to, one thing I wanted to show you about the trunk is it's got an auto closer, like you see on all the Mercedes and BMWs now, and my van, so that when you just touch it, it sucks the trunk in. See? Neat. Especially on a 1990 car. Okay, inside the car, these are cool. The doors feel great when you open and close them. One sad thing is that that wood is only a veneer, it's not real wood. And so 
I think that's probably my biggest annoyance with the Century. It feels really good to open the doors. This is really easy to pull and it pops right, right out easily. Every door of the four doors has its own ashtray with its own cigarette lighter. And unfortunately it did come with cigarettes in it, but when I sat into the car, the smell of smoke is not what I smell. It smelled like a fruit salad, which is a little bit strange, but I guess better than the smell of smoke. It's got an awful lot of buttons here. Let me show you what we got here. Seat heaters. Now you get seat heaters for all four seats, and these seats feel like you're sitting on a marshmallow. It's literally the softest seats I've ever sat in. And of course, full power seats. Now I didn't test the seats. Oh, that's lumbar support. Because I wanted to leave all the interior checking to this video, which is something I usually don't do. Looks like that function doesn't work. Either that or the springs keep it up, and that only happens when you're sitting in it. I don't know, check that. Uh, and I'm going to show you these in just a sec. It's got some of the weirdest windows. Two things that I've never seen on a car ever before. But before we do that, passenger gets a ghetto seat. Okay, that all works. Okay, so back to the windows. The window has some sort of, uh, I, I don't know what you would call it, flywheel. It keeps, when you press the window button, after you stop, usually the windows will stop on a dime right when you let go. But this one allows the window to go down like an extra centimeter, which is really wild. Now it's not, it's not something that, uh, you can probably see in the video, but it, it feels very different. It feels, I guess, higher quality, but it's also got these. And that's full electronic. So that's something that I have never seen. And actually it's got these on the front and it's got them on the back. You get different buttons here for auto down. There's a completely different button from the one that is uh, as much as you want. So window lock here. This one here is for your triangle window in the front, triangle windows in the back, and the other power windows. And so those all work, so I'm not gonna show you them. Auto dimmer here for the lights, which is another thing that you see on most new luxury cars, is when you close the doors, the lights will go instead of just turn off. Steering is very, very, uh, easy to steer. Easy to steer, easy to move the steering wheel. Power steering feels good, brakes feel good, throttle response feels good. Full digital. Now I was using a 1990 computer and so the, this is a little bit laggy, but this isn't a sports car and you don't fluctuate your RPMs very quickly in a car like this anyway. Electronic height control and TEMS. TEMS is a computer controlled suspension system that does a whole bunch of weird things for you. It'll uh, strengthen or weaken the suspension depending on the condition. And there are multiple different conditions for that. For example, if you hit the brake suddenly, normally you go whoa like that, but it'll reduce that by firming up the front suspension and softening uh, the rear, something like that, I don't know. And up after a certain speed, it will tighten your suspension. And if you hit the gas suddenly, it'll do something to the suspension so that uh, it doesn't uh, shutter the car or I guess cause you to fly back in your seat. Very good looking steering wheel here which is great on such an old car. Automatic transmission shifts perfect. This is a little bit cheap feeling. It clicks in there. Aftermarket here. Sport suspension for all your sporting needs in a Toyota Century which is never. Power button there. Automatic uh, air conditioning. Front and rear are separate. The air conditioning works, and it's got this, look, swing, I'll put it up to the highest, swing vents. Can you see that swinging? It's really cool, and you can get that on the JZX 100s as well. But here, unlike the 100s, you can set the swing speed to a slower speed with this little dial here. So, super cool there. Here's the dashboard warp that I was telling you about. You get lights here. Headliner's really neat. It looks very old car style. 
like that. And these ones are level with the headliner, which is something a little bit different. Speakers are hiding in this nice little carpeting. The back seat has some really cool thing. Uh, let me just show you. I'll go back there now. This is soft. Seats so nice. Okay. Okay, so back seats have tons of room in here. You get a cool little turkey here in the middle, which I guess is the crown sign, because back in the day, all the Toyota cars had little mascots. Up until, I guess, the early 90s. Okay, so seat, power seats here for putting in and out. It's kind of like an S-Class thing. And then, of course, seat heaters here. And then, if you sit in the seat and you look up, you have, they call this refreshing seat. It's weird. Now, I can't really show you, but it's, uh, it's vibrating the seat. And then room lamps here. You get uh, one for when the door's open and then one extra one if you need more light. This is sadly worn on both sides. As you can see there, you have trash box. Now I'm going to show you this. Technics. This one here, here's the rear air conditioner. This is a CD player, a tape deck, a volume controls here. Uh, this one here is for um, air conditioning, audio, fan speed. It's got a bunch of stuff that I don't really read or know how to read. You're going to have to get those translated, unfortunately. But then check this out. Oh, and here's your rear AC up here. It's got tape deck. But this one's not for listening to music. That one would be the one that would have normally been up there, which has been taken out. This one's for recording. And so you can set your mic level. The mic is right here. And you can, I guess, dictate your notes while you're being driven around using the tape deck and then take the tape out and you know people don't do kind of stuff like this anymore because iPhones are used instead of tape decks but uh, still very cool it's got headset here so you can listen to a tape if you want or you can record your own stuff on the tape and you get your own little things here underneath here you've got a pretend wood table and a telephone boop, 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 boop. cool and a little slot to put your stuff so tape recorder in the back almost as cool as a karaoke machine that you can get in some Japanese cars this one here is controls for the front seat so if you want to move the front seat forward, you're like, oh, I need some more room. Because most of the time when you're being driven around, you're going to be driven in the opposite seat of the driver because there will be nobody in this seat. And then you can have a lot of room. And so lots of room in here. This mirror is a little bit interesting because you've got the mirror here but then it comes down like this and can swivel side to side. So, I don't know what the use of that is, but I, I guess it's so that you can see yourself. Hi. Can you see me? And you get your special controls over here too. Um, central locking doesn't work on this door. And, this they've got little hooks for curtains but no curtains strange and open side mirror closed side mirror okay so this video is getting too long what are we at 20 minutes wow I don't know if anyone actually watched to this uh, this point in the video but if you did thank you and thank you for watching the
Toyota Century, our first ever. Hopefully not our last, because these are really interesting, really special vehicles here. So, thank you everyone who watches and subscribes to the videos, and have a nice day.